Are you one of those people who go around telling everyone that nothing has worked for you, you've tried every trendy shampoo and supplement under the sun, visited all doctors you could, and you're just ready to give up? It's been happening to you for so long that you became an expert in worrying or complaining. What if I told you that perhaps it's because you're doing something wrong? You're making the same common mistakes and fall for the same trap that most people. Luckily, I fell for all of them as well, so you don't have to. Hi, I'm Agata and I'm a trichologist and hair loss expert. On this channel, we take a scientific look at popular hair problems to help you keep your hair on your head and keep it looking fabulous. If you want to become a hair expert yourself, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any info that might help you solve your hair problems. Let's get to the today's topic, which is why people fail at stopping hair loss. Number one, they don't want to put in the work to learn. The number one common mistake that people make is not wanting to learn and chickening out once they find out that there is work to be done on their side. Now, let me explain. People usually ask me all the wrong questions. They ask what product is going to make my hair stop falling instead of what is the cost of my hair loss and how can I find this out? Which really is the first step to anything. Now, I don't blame anyone for not knowing when to start. I've been there, I know how it is when you feel lost, but sometimes I get those messages from people who are almost disappointed when I don't give them a name of a product that they can just, they can just go out and buy and that would magically solve their issue. Very often, all info that I am given in this initial message is Hi, my hair is falling out for a few months now, it's getting progressively worse and I feel like I'm going to be bald very soon, so can you just tell me what you use and what helped you? Now, this doesn't make sense for a number of reasons, but the most important one is what helps me won't necessarily help you, especially if you don't know even why your hair is falling out. So what we have to do here in the beginning is to establish the right order of action and the right game plan. But in order to do that, we need to gather information. So in those situations, I always start any conversations with asking questions like When was the last time you did your blood test? Do you have any results I could look at? Do you experience any other symptoms? And so on and so forth. And then I give people the list of blood work and medical examinations that needs to be done in order to diagnose anything. Besides, there's a new hair product coming out nearly every day, so the list I will give you today may not make much sense in five years time because the formula may change or the quality of their ingredients may change and it may not be effective anymore. So I would prefer if you knew why a particular product works instead of remembering that that girl on YouTube said that the shampoo in a purple bottle is good. Number two, wrong order of treatments. People rubbing hair growth serum while having their scalp covered with flakes and inflammation. Or they didn't eliminate the fallout but they tried to stimulate growth instead. I know that you'd like to do everything as quickly as possible and at the same time, but you have to slow down for a second. Well, your hair loss has a cause. And if you don't get rid of it, putting a hair growth serum on your head will do absolutely nothing. You may stimulate the hair that's left on your head, but if you don't do anything with the cause, soon you will have nothing to stimulate. Sure, sometimes you can trick the follicles and get an impression of temporary improvement, but the moment you stop, Mayhem. You may actually make your condition worse, because spraying a scalp with a product containing capsaicin, for example, which is a popular circulation stimulant used in hair growth products, can make your scalp burn like hell if you have dermatitis or other type of inflammation. It's also completely pointless if you have an active eczema, with thick layers of flakes covering your scalp, because no matter what you put on top of it, it won't get through those flakes to the follicle. You're wasting your time, money and possibly making things worse. So please make sure you do the right things in the right order, so they can actually work for you. I'm going to teach you about it in my next video and give you the whole game plan, so don't worry if you don't know it yet, we'll get there. Three, lack of consistency and patience. Now this right here? is a lot of work. Keeping this much hair on my head, it's a full-time job on its own. Believe me, if there was one product, one pill, one shampoo that could stop hair loss or relieve your scalp problem, we would probably know about it by now because hair loss industry is worth about $4 billion. Consistency is key. I can't tell you how many times I hear that a patient has no time to do hair treatments. For example, some cases of scalp issues require you to wash your hair every day, religiously. Because, for instance, it's super important in seborrheic dermatitis cases to wash away dead skin cells buildup with a mild exfoliator so no fungal or bacterial infections can develop. 
and I'm trying to explain that to the SD patient and you know what I hear? Ain't nobody got time for that! It's so common! You often complain about not having time to do the treatments or you don't complain but you cheat and won't admit it on your next visit. And then you wonder why nothing works for you, because you don't do it the way you're supposed to. It doesn't matter if you feel like your hair doesn't need to be washed yet. If you're supposed to wash it every day, do it. Just do it! Yes, you can! If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. It takes you hours to wash and blow dry, set up an early alarm clock and move around your daily schedule so you can accommodate for it. You know what time I wake up at? 6 a.m just to wash my hair. It takes me hours to do it, but I do it. I curse at myself in the mirror, but I do it. You need to do a scalp peel once a week, set up a notification in your phone so you don't forget. You need to rub in a topical medication or scalp spray, do it. You need a diet change and exclude a particular products from it, do it. Be serious about it. Get yourself on a routine that works for your life and if it doesn't work with your life, but at the same time you want to keep your hair on your head, then I'm sorry, but you need to change your life. You may think that what you do at home makes a little difference, but keeping your scalp healthy will save your hair time and money, because those little things that you do every day will prevent the condition from getting worse, to the point when you need to book another appointment at the doctor's or need to pay for another medication or steroid. You need to be passionate about solving your problem. If you're not, you will most likely not succeed because you will not find motivation to keep learning, researching and staying consistent with treatments or hair care. And you know what? It's going to be hard because fighting hair loss is a really unfair battle. It takes years to grow out hair and get back what you lost, but it only takes months or weeks even to lose all of it due to some health issue. I have five conditions at once that make my hair fall and it's really hard to juggle them all, keep them in remissions and sometimes I do drop the ball and it hurts when I see my hair getting worse again but it's just a part of it and you will drop the ball at some point too but if you're passionate about the journey then you won't get discouraged and will eventually succeed. You have to ask yourself, do you want to keep attempting to solve the issue or just solve it? You want results, you need to earn them. They are concerned more about the aesthetics of hair loss rather than the cause. Oftentimes when you lose your hair, you want to do something about it because it looks bad. You're getting bald spots, your hairline is receding, your temples get this very fine, almost invisible head that you can't see your scalp through it. So people usually get scared of how it looks instead of why it looks that way. That is why they look for aesthetic solutions rather than the medical one. They look in a drugstore, not a pharmacy. And that's the wrong way to go about it. You will not make it look good aesthetically if you won't heal it medically. So it's going to be a little bit of a money investing lesson. Hear me out. People would spend their money on the countless heavily marketed cosmetic products, wigs and extensions rather than doctor visit and blood test because they prefer to spend it on something tangible that they can just put out on a bathroom shelf or their head rather than piece of paper with information that they don't really understand. And guys, I get it, doctor's visit and blood work are really expensive, but I can assure you that if you add up the amount that you spent on all those shampoos that didn't do anything for you, and all those jelly bear supplements that have more sugar than vitamins, and all those extensions that hid the problem so you could pretend that it didn't exist for a while, then you would end up with much bigger amount that you would spend at the doctor's office. I do sympathize with my folks in America, I lived there for a short while, so I know the prices for a simple morphology and it's no joke. I do understand that this can get overwhelming and costly depending on where you live, but guys, you know what's even more expensive? Buying products that won't help you at all, using them up or throwing away after a while just so you can buy a next one that's hot at this very moment and keep testing with no success. For some reason people are much more keen to spend a lot of money on colorful cosmetics because they're fun to use. No medication is usually fun to use and packaging of those medications, pills or ointments don't really look sexy at all and you can't really brag about buying them to friends or display on Instagram. But those are the ones that will really make a difference. There's also a topic of buying wigs. If you want to buy a wig, it should only be complementary to the treatment, not to replace the treatment. I know that both of those things are expensive. If you can afford both, great. Do whatever makes you happy and confident, but 
when you are faced with a choice whether to spend your money on a wig versus spending on the blood work and medications, always choose healing over hiding. The way I think about it is, it is never too late to buy yourself a wig, but there is a moment when it's too late to save your hair. The wig, no problem. You can do that at any time, in the beginning of your hair loss, somewhere in the middle, or when you're completely bald, it makes no difference. But there is a point when it's too late to save your hair especially when you suffer from androgenetic alopecia with follicle miniaturization or any scarring type of alopecia. If you feel like you need to do both and have the money to do it, great. If not, please invest in your own hair in the first place before you invest in fake one. Let's focus just on the effective stuff. And the effective stuff is any lab test ordered by your trichologist or your doctor, doctor's visits, prescribed medication supplements approved by your physician, prescribed or recommended hair and scalp products either by your doctor or a trichologist, hair loss treatments, and that's it. There's nothing else you should be spending your money on if it comes to hair loss. So that's it for today's video. I hope it shed a light on what you may be doing wrong. If you found this video helpful, please make sure you subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up and let me know your questions and thoughts in the comments down below.